So guys, um, you're all out today. So we, we understand we're all here for a training day. Before we get into the training day, I just want you to understand a little bit about Global Medic, who we are and what we do. We are 911 to the international world, okay, to the international system. We are the folks that come in, put up hospitals, get clean drinking water out very early on in the early hours after a catastrophe to buy time for every other agency and every other group to come in so they can take over. We don't want to be there one or two years later, okay? But we do want to be there very early. 61 hours after the earthquake in Haiti, our teams were on the ground and operational. That's the key word, operational. We run three teams. We have a search and rescue program, we have a water purification program, and we have an emergency medical program. You look at just our 2010 statistics. We had seven hospitals, we put them in five locations in Pakistan and in Haiti. They treated over 30,000 patients just in our medical facilities in those years. We had uh, over 100 water units up and running in different crises zones. They provided over 26 million liters of clean drinking water. We also distributed in that year alone 70 million water purification tablets that if every one of them got used properly, that would have been another 700 million liters of water. And the key to us is we're a family unit, you know, we're, we're all friends, we're all emergency workers, highly skilled people that answer 911 calls every day. We all come in for the right reason. We want to volunteer our time, we want to help folks, and we all bring a different skill set. And every time we look at a problem, we come up with different ways of solving the problem. Well, the majority of the people that volunteer with us are emergency responders. So they're police officers, firefighters, paramedics, doctors, nurses, people that deal with trauma on a regular basis. So in addition to their experience already through their own jobs, we provide them training and give them the knowledge and expertise they need to be able to handle with tough situations on the ground. And in addition to that, every time a person goes into the field the first time, they're always led in by experienced personnel who have been there before, who have done multiple deployments, and who have dealt with these situations and how, can help walk them through that. You know, it's not hard to recruit folks. There's, uh, people are drawn to us, they know what we do. They get an idea, we're a no nonsense, no BS, no politics, no meetings, no ridiculousness. We're a get things done agency. People have needs, we come in and fill those needs. Did a little bit of the tent setup and everything like that, so it's cool to see how how quickly and then how innovative it's become. I've done medical missions elsewhere. Uh, haven't done any kind of this missions before, so it's a different whole experience. And I've been the same as Jose on a medical mission as a staff respiratory therapist, and just something that seems like an interesting way to see the world and help people at the same time. These are the people with those skill sets that you want delivering aid. So it's not hard to find them and they come to us. When our teams go into a country, we want to make sure that uh, our team is there working right away. Uh, so we have specially designed water purification units that are the maximum allowable size as a check-in bag on a plane. Um, that way, our team, as soon as they get on the ground, they can start working purifying water uh, for people and attending to uh, injured. So in these cases here, we have pre-positioned medical gear. So anytime a disaster uh, hits, we're immediately able to put one of these on cargo with our other water purification units and inflatable field hospitals to send out into the field immediately. We can be viewed as Canada's new foreign aid, you know, or, or foreign policy, because we're often the front line. Our rescuers are often the front line that people in Guatemala, the people in Bangladesh, the people in Pakistan see. And it's the only reflection of Canadians that they get is our folks that are in delivering medical care, treating their babies, saving their children's lives, giving them clean water, getting them food. Um, so we are in that way a, a great representation of Canada. The greatest mission I've been on is Pakistan. Um, and I think the reason was is because we got to help so many people every single day. At one point I was in a village where nobody was living and we were able to bring water back into the well and bring the village clean water and villages started moving back in by the truckload. So to be able to provide that and get people back into their home, I think that was my greatest experience. We actually had a family, we um, helped save their sister. She came in severely dehydrated on her deathbed. And uh, three or four hours later, once we gave her the IV fluids, pretty much we, we did save her life actually. And uh, her family walked the next day three hours in 50 degree heat, because it's very hot there, just to come and say thank you. 
So that's something I'm never gonna forget. It was one of our uh, later responses after the initial response that we had in, in Haiti. Um, we then distributed 1,800 Rainfresh units and uh, it was an amazing experience. We then went, went in in September, two years after, and people still had great need in Haiti, so um, we were doing, again, a cholera mitigation program, and uh, so distributing household level water purification units to families that were in need, and then that gave them the autonomy to purify their own water there. But Global Medic really gets these local people involved so they can help themselves. Young guys who were victims were on their motorcycles, delivering water, learning how to use the purifiers, and, the, and, and involving these people in their own recovery was really cool. They thought we got paid for what we do. And when we told them we were doing it volunteer, that we had to take time off from work, that we weren't getting paid, period, they were that much more overwhelmed, that we would go there to help them. You know, uh, the Japanese people, are they're, they're a very proud and honorable people. And uh, I think once they got to know us and they, they realized that we were just friends, just trying to help another friend in need. I, I had my translator say, I'm here to help you because you know what, there's nobody else that I'd rather come help to me if I was in trouble, so I'm just doing my part, you know. And, and I think they really respected that and they understood that. And it worked out really well. They actually liked us a lot, especially when they saw like we work hard at Global Night. And The fact that all the money we raise goes into the disaster itself is something to be said. There isn't the overhead that all the bigger organizations have and I have a lot of respect for the people at Global Medic to be able to run an organization like that. You go into a place like Haiti where we treated 7,000 patients, right? And the tragedy with Haiti is we had the capacity and the manpower to double our response. So we could have treated 14,000 had we had the funds in place up front. So I know we're good at what we do. The next challenge for us is to get that money and that resource in so we could be bigger, faster, and aid that much more in that short hook. So we want to revolutionize this industry. We want to make everyone better by being better ourselves and by showing that there is a better way, a less expensive way, and a more efficient way. So that when the public gives us more and more support, we can retool and expand as we need to.